There was never any question of simply leaving them behind when we pull out of Afghanistan, but at last we know what's to become of the mastiffs, ridgebacks, wolfhounds, jackals, coyotes, panthers and huskies. They'll all join the foxhound in the core equipment program. Lieutenant General Adrian Bradshaw has recently taken over as commander of land forces and announced that in the army of 2020, jackal, coyote and panther will replace scimitar in the light cavalry role. What will be known as armoured cavalry will operate the new Scout SV. Mastiff, Ridgeback, Husky and Jackal will provide heavy infantry protected mobility. More of these will equip combat support units, while the Paras and Royal Marines will also get to keep their Jackals. We already knew that Foxhound would become the backbone of light infantry protected mobility, but more of these may now need to be bought. The Army's announcement that it's keeping vehicles like Panther into the medium term is possible thanks to the 10-year equipment plan, the knowledge that there will be £5.4 billion to spend on armoured vehicles over the next decade. The Army also gets more control of its own finances from April this year, with a degree of financial delegation coming from the MOD centrally. It all adds up to certainty for troops that the state-of-the-art kit they've been fighting in in Afghanistan will survive the end of that conflict at least until it's replaced with something even better. And it means there's a degree of certainty for industry. That's an exciting opportunity for the company. Um, we've worked very hard to bring those vehicles into service over the last six years. Um, so now we're looking forward to supporting them through their life. And we think that they'll be a, a, a hugely valuable asset to the Army. Bringing these urgent operational requirements as their own into the core equipment programme means that there will now be a fixture of the Army for years to come. Will Inglis, Forces News, Farnborough. Well, afterwards, our reporter, Will Inglis, caught up with Commander Land Forces and asked him how the urgent operational vehicles would fit in to the Army's future plans. Yeah, well, as I said in my, in my conference speech, uh, we now have the best range of vehicles that we've seen for a generation. Our people are properly mounted and properly protected, uh, and they appreciate uh, the work that's been put into delivering uh, this fleet of vehicles. It's pretty vital that we recover them efficiently, uh, efficiently from Afghanistan and we get them integrated into our core fleet for future contingencies and we shall have to find the funding to do that. So you mentioned the money there. Is this all costed then? Well, we're, uh, we're looking at the implications of that now. Uh, clearly we've uh, been allocated 5.4 billion for the future equipment program, so that is now secure. Um, we look forward to developing uh, the Scout, uh, the utility vehicle, uh, improving Warrior and Challenger. Those are all going to be the future capabilities. But the um, urgent operational requirement fleet are the, are the vehicles to bridge the gap and deal with the immediate contingencies. Is there a risk that running on some of these urgent operational requirement vehicles could prevent proper longer term investment in something like the, the planned utility vehicle? Well, we've got to be realistic. Uh, you know, we've got to uh, balance things properly within our resources. But vehicles like Mastiff uh, are extremely well protected. They've served us incredibly well in theatre. Uh, there are many people uh, alive today uh, who wouldn't have been in a different sort of vehicle uh, and uh, they've got utility for the future in all sorts of places and it's sensible that we uh, hang on to those vehicles until they're replaced in a proper program. 